Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We celebrate our final Green Sunday. I always like to kind of point out those, those changes. And next week we'll have Christ the King. Then we'll go into Advent Christmas season. This time as we draw to the end of ordinary time, continue the theme likewise in our readings. Looking forward to the future, by doing so with hope. God, our, our hope and our help in ages past, as we heard it sing in our opening song. Inviting to a deeper trust, a deeper, a deeper confidence in that grace of God. And so, brothers and sisters, we take a moment as we call to mind our sins. We ask the Lord to prepare us to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. We intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. to serve with constancy, the author of all that is good, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Lo, the day is coming, blazing like a oven, when all the proud and all the evildoers will be stubble, and the day that is coming will set them on fire, leaving them neither root nor branch, says the Lord of hosts. But for you who fear my name, there will arise the Son of Justice with his healing rays. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial song. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. Sing praise to the Lord with a heart, with a heart and melodious song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, <coughs> sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. Let the sea and what filled it resound. 
the world and all those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, the mountains shout with them for joy. The Lord comes to rule the earth in justice. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He will rule the world with justice and the peoples with equity. The second reading is a reading from the letter of, the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, you know how I must imitate us, for we did not act in a disorderly way among you, nor did we eat food received free from anyone. On the contrary, in toil and drudgery, night and day, we work so as not to burden any of you. Not that we do not have the right. Rather, we wanted to present ourselves as a model for you so that you, so that you might imitate us. In fact, when we were with you, we instructed you that if anyone was unwilling to work, neither should that one eat. We hear that some are conducting themselves among you in a disorderly way, by not keeping busy, but minding the business of others. Such people we instruct and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to work quietly and to eat their own food. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, all that you see here, the days will come where there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, see that you not be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, the time and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Before all this happens, however, they will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and the prisons, they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking, that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute you. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. As a young child, I didn't always pay a lot of attention to the homily. But I remember a few different ones that kind of struck me. And there's one I remember in particular that really kind of perplexed me. It was when I was at maybe elementary school. My brothers played hockey. I didn't play hockey, but I was, at that time, I was too young to be left home alone. So when they had hockey practice, I had to go to hockey practice too and hang out at the ice rink. So they're in Champaign down on campus. 
And there was one day we went to Mass at a church, which in hindsight I know now was St. John's, and I can work out that it must have been the Feast of the Assumption of Mary, which was a holy day of obligation. So I'm sure it was the situation in which they had practice, and my mom looked and thought, oh, we can just walk because it's just a block away uh, from the ice rink to St. John's Newman Center here in Champaign. So anyway, so I'm sure my mom thought, okay, we'll just walk over and go to Mass there. What really perplexed me about it, though, and what I, why I remember that comedy, is because it uh, corrected a misunderstanding I had um, that I think is, is maybe not uncommon. Last week we talked when the, the Sadducees came and asked Jesus about the resurrection, about that life of the soul in heaven. So when the soul is separated from the body at death, Jesus says they are like angels and they do not die giving some of those, those characteristics, some of those qualities of what that life would be like. But that that's not the end, that Jesus points to something beyond that. And so this homily at, at the Newman Center was about the Assumption of Mary, which is Mary's bodily entrance into heaven. That just as reason, Jesus was raised from the dead, not just soul, but body as well, that likewise in the Feast of the Assumption, celebrate Mary's entrance into heaven. And as the priest said, each of us, that we believe that the resurrection of the body is not limited just to Jesus. That the resurrection of the body is something that is part of Christian faith uh, for each of us. And again, that really disconcerted me, because I was really only familiar with the part of the faith about the soul in heaven. Again, so that was something that I didn't really learn much more about, or didn't, didn't really study myself, didn't look into much again. But that when I was in the seminary, that, that topic came up, and it was like, oh yeah, I remember that. I remember being kind of confused about that. When we look at these, 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 uh, this gospel that is both the one we hear today and, and the, the similar ones in other gospels, Jesus begins to speak about that and help to clarify that. And again, with our theme of November, this is an important theme, that Jesus is really getting into these topics uh, because we're here in Holy Week. Last week, I, I also mentioned that the, there is a transition from Zacchaeus climbing the tree and then continuing on in these Gospels to higher topics. It's because Zacchaeus climbing the tree is the end of Jesus' public ministry in Luke's Gospel. That that's the beginning of Luke chapter 19. At the end of Luke chapter 19, Jesus enters Jerusalem, where we celebrate on Palm Sunday. Uh, he goes to the temple and he cleanses, throws out the, the money lenders. So that these Gospels we have, so this last week, this week, and next week, are all Holy Week Gospels. So the Sadducees questioning about the resurrection. The, these coming up here about the temple, the destruction of the temple. Uh, and then the Gospel we'll have next week. So looking at these last things, that Holy Week, in a sense, is the uh, fulfillment of all of the Old Testament signs, and it's a prefigurement of what will come. That there's echoes throughout Scripture. That again, there's certain events that happen that prefigure events that will happen later, that Jesus, you know, in Jesus' own life, but that in many ways, Jesus' life is a prefigurement of even more future events. We can look at these things kind of repeating in different ways at different levels. So Jesus enters Jerusalem, that this, uh, he goes to the temple. In um, John's account of this, where they ask him about the temple, Jesus says, you know, this, this temple will be torn down, that not even a stone will be left upon another stone that will not be thrown down. But Luke, add, or sorry, John, in, in his account, adds that, that deeper comment that Jesus says, that just as you destroy this temple, I will raise it in three days. And John says you know, he was speaking of the temple of his body. That the temple being thrown down is uh, what he sees as a symbol of, or what he teaches is a symbol of the death that he has and his resurrection. That the temple will be destroyed in the year 70 AD. Uh, the Romans will attack and or will besiege and destroy the Roman temple, or sorry, the Jewish temple. Uh, and that, uh, in a sense, will be a, a sort of fulfillment of this. So you have, again, these, these signs. You have things in the Old Testament, like the destruction of the Old Testament temple, and it's rebuilt, you know, for example, in Maccabees, which we heard uh, about last week. You have Jesus, his, his, the body of his temple, or sorry, the temple of his body, his death on the cross will be raised. The temple of Jerusalem will be destroyed. But then it points again towards the future. In a sense, to the individual death that we'll, we will experience, and in a sense, to the end of the world. That it's something mysterious, Jesus says. You know, that be, he says, be warned, do not be deceived. Many will say, okay, this is it, this is the end. You see that all the time. You see those cycles. You can find uh, online, Google, end of the world, and you can probably find 
you know, 20 different times it has been predicted in the past and 20 different times it'll be predicted in the future. She says, do not be deceived. That it's something that is, is mysterious, which I think lends to us that healthy seriousness that you know, we're, we're always ready. That it's not something that we should look at with a great fear or a unhealthy anxiety. Jesus says, not a hair on your head will be destroyed, but your perseverance will secure your lives. But a healthy seriousness. A healthy uh, awareness, again, of the importance of the time that we have. So again, going back to that fulfillment. So Jesus enters Jerusalem. The uh, speaking of this temple goes pointing towards his resurrection. That that resurrection then is pointing. That there will be this time, what we might call the time of the church, the time of the Holy Spirit as we uh, are living in now, when uh, we have that chance to enter in through the sacraments, through faith, into the life of Christ, and that promise that our soul perseveres, that it enters into heaven to live that time in Christ, but that there will become that final moment, what we call the general resurrection, in which uh, there will be an end in a sense, that this world will come to an end, that there will be the general resurrection and the beginning of participating in Christ's life in that way, the glorified body. Again, many of these things are, are hinted at or given images of Scripture, but we have to be careful, I think, about trying to think that we can just find all the answers or, or reason it out. You know, that it's not something, you know, the, fairy, the Sadducees last week, well, what if there's seven people, you know, that marry and, you know, they die in succession and what will happen? Well, some of that, will be solved in ways that we don't understand. We know that our body will be connected with the body we have now. But it's not necessarily just you know, the exact same. Jesus, when he's raised from the dead, it mentions that many of the people that see him don't recognize him at first, uh, but then as, they, as he speaks to them, they realize, oh, this is him. Again, likewise, his body is glorified. It's not it doesn't have a disfigurement in the sense from, from his time on the cross, but he still has the wounds in his hands and his side and his feet. But they're not, but they're glorified wounds in the sense that they're no longer signs of uh, suffering, but signs of glory. The sign of God's grace working through those wounds. That's interesting to think about you know, in a way that as we think of the difficulties and sufferings in this life, that in a sense they'll be they'll be manifest but manifest in a way that shows the glory working through them. The way that there's this massive outpouring of grace through those particular sufferings in our life. That there'll be signs of God's grace, you know, the way that uh, right now um, can be tempted in so many ways to want to be free of, of them or to, to not want to have to carry them. But the way that we'll see the glory of God and, you know, having worked through them. You know, it's something mysterious, but it's something that uh, is important to know, you know. The, the care that we have. You know, when we pray at the graveside, this is a, a truth that's, that's very much in the graveside prayers, the uh, prayers of internment or, or commendation or committal uh, uh, for the rite of funerals, that it speaks about that. You know, that the, it speaks of the twofold life, the life of the soul after death, but it speaks also of that future resurrection, that the care, the dignity uh, of even the body of the, of the deceased points to our belief in the resurrection. There was a time when it was not permitted to do cremation because it was uh, often a, a pagan symbol of rejection of the resurrection. That now, you know, obviously, that's not the sense in which people do cremation now. And so the church has said you know, that as long as it's not a specific rejection of resurrection, um, it, it's not prohibited. But that even the remains of the, of the, the body in cremation, can we treat with that reverence and that dignity? That reverence and that dignity of the body is a sign that points to the future resurrection. That our, our body and soul uh, are meant, in a sense, to be together. That we're created in that twofold unity of body and soul. And that the ultimate fulfillment, the ultimate healing of the wounds of original sin is that glorified life. That Christ points to in his own life, that again points to us. That in the Assumption, we look at that in its beginning of its fulfillment in Mary, but that it's something that should give us hope as well. Next week, we'll talk more. The, again, we'll be kind of Christ the King. We'll round up this, this series of reflections. But today, to think about that, uh, that image that Christ used, the temple. That our body, as Paul says, is a temple. God dwelling with us. That this gift is something that we treasure here in this life. 
is something that we trust over to the Lord uh, in that commendation, that final uh, moment um, of this life. But it's one that the Lord will restore. Will restore heal. Will restore glory. The wounds that we have that will be transformed. The glory of the grace of working through this life. Asking the Lord to deepen our faith, together we pray. I believe in one God, the Father of Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of Father before all nations, God and God, light from light, true God and true God, the God is not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things remain. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under conscious power, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Spirit of faith, let us raise our prayers and petitions. For all who are persecuted or imprisoned for their faith, that they rejoice to share in Christ's suffering. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peoples of every land, that they be free to worship God in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For victims of war, earthquake, and famine, that they receive help from around the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families divided by religion, that Christ restore them to loving unity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that we persevere in times of trial. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions written in our parish book, for those on our cancer quilt, for those who have served in the military, living and deceased, for vocations to the ordained and consecrated life, and for Henry Hamill, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection and purification of the Church here and throughout the world, let us pray the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, we bless us in hell. Be our protection against the wickedness and sins of hell. May God be with you. God, who lived off our prayers, we ask that you hear and answer them according to your holy will, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The offertory is in the 534. O oh, bless the Lord, my soul.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, I was going to mention that one of the uh, mentioning those, those patterns is that uh, as a sign that this Eucharistic prayer is entering into that, that death and resurrection of Christ, the, in a second we'll be doing the Holy, 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 that is both the prayer of the angels in the Old and New Testament, that we're entering the presence of God, but also the, the cry from Palm Sunday, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So entering with Christ into Holy Week, entering with Christ uh, into heaven. The Lord be with you. May Almighty, or sorry, sorry, lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering he canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Partaking of the body and blood of Christ, you may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Louis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Then with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 402, Lord of All Hope. 
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring the Lord that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Speaking of growth in charity, love of God, love of neighbor, you might have noticed we have a Christmas tree up already. So we are doing a uh, support for the Community Service Center Holiday Bureau, which is basically a Toys for Children program. It will begin in uh, mid-December, so we're asking if you could, uh, if you're able to take, there are envelopes, which would be just for a monetary donation, or little angels that are for a gift. Bring those back the next couple of weekends before that, by that first Sunday of, of December, or if, even if you can, the one before, so we can get them to them as they, they will organize and do all that work before the, the uh, giveaway. Um, but if you're able and interested, that's a way to kind of help um, as we look towards that holiday season um, to show that love of neighbor. Uh, there's one other thing I was going to announce about. Read the bulletin, it might be in there. <laughs> but, uh, again, keep an eye as we kind of get into Advent. Oh, that was it. Advent starts in two weeks. So kind of be thinking about that. How can we make Advent something special? How in the midst of all of the busyness do we uh, make that time for prayer, make that time for, for that spiritual significance of that? So that would be it. So, the Lord be with you. And with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. 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 Amen.